All right, man, what's your name and what do you drive? So I'm Walter Jones and I'm driving a uh, S14 95. Tell me a little bit about what you got done to the car. I've had it for six years, and every time something broke, I've replaced it. So it's pretty much all the way through. It's got a new engine. It was built by Naprec Motorsports. Top in anyways, got the high response kit, one millimeter over, valve, stuff like that. Bottom in, I went with factory. That's just because factory is more reliable, unless you start sleeving the block, which I happen to have a sleeve block laying around ready to go in case this one does blow. As far as the turbo setup, it's just an ISR journal, journal bearing turbo. It's supposed to be the equivalent to a 2871R Garrett. I went with journal bearing because I blew three or four of the ball bearing turbos and I gave up on trying to figure out what the right restrictor was. So I just went, yeah, let's just dump oil at it until it doesn't blow. Unfortunately, I'm still tuned on a uh, Japanese Hayaku there, 96, 98 octane here. So I'm not really driving it that hard right now. I bought it before the spike. I bought it before it was even close to legal. I traded a Nissan Stagia that I had bought maybe a month before for $2,500. And that was an RS4 Stagia. So those have also jumped in price. This thing was a WKO which is like the uh, white pearl Zanke Navan car. It's a 1995, so I did do the uh, I did do the conversion to Koki. I got a really good deal on the uh, body kit because I had a friend who worked with BN Sports, and it is an official BN Sports kit. I picked it up from Ibaraki myself. Tell me a little bit about what you got done interior-wise on your car. This guy, I have replaced the rear seats with S15 seats. They actually bolt right in. They're a little bit more sleek looking, I think. For the seat itself, Bride Zeta 3. We got the Vertex June X Watanabe steering wheel. That one I'm pretty proud of. And I have a uh, old Vertex shift knob that they don't really sell anymore. Dash was crackless when I bought it. I'm rocking Blitz ZZR coilover struts. I'm rocking the ISR pretty much all around. I have an angle kit. I didn't want the angle kit on it with the lower control arms and all that. It was on the boat coming over here. But right now it's on a pretty factory setup. I've got 285s up front. You can't fit 285s when you have the angle kit going. <laughs> These wheels are 10 and a half plus 12. And then they have plus 25 spacers on the front too for getting a little bit more scrub radius. I have a preference for a little bit more scrub up front. That's a lot of room for the wheel to move around though. And it ends up being the equivalent to a 10.5 negative three wheel. So I started drifting in 2018. Had a good group of buds, AJ Rice, Rohab Khan. They dragged me up to Ebisu Circuit for Matsuri, which is not the place you want to start driving. <laughs> I actually drove this thing uh, when it was still pretty terrible. Uh, the exhaust would fall off every single time I would try and drive it, and I just didn't care. It I just kept driving until I was done, and then I'd go hang it back up at the end. It sounded ridiculous. You drift up here in Alaska as well. Yeah, so I haven't had any events where I've had a car last the entire time up here. I destroy clutches pretty quickly. All the techniques have their merit. I tend to do a lot more clutch kicking in the kind of events that they have up here. Yeah, tight circuits. So. Yeah, they're, they're pretty tight and driving pretty low power cars. Tell me about the drift car that you're, you're using right now up here. I have a bone stock. 2007 350Z. Doesn't have any e-brake that works. <laughs> e-brakes don't do anything. <laughs> what got you into motorsports and cars in general? I had a friend in high school. He looked at me one day and said, you look like you'd be into tuner cars. And then it became my identity thereafter. That was Anthony Wheeler. So I started at 17. I took my first Mark III Supra, blew the head gasket immediately on the 7M, tried to stuff a 2J in it back when 2Js were still cheap. It didn't work. <laughs> I didn't know enough. Eventually got to Japan. I still didn't know that much. I thought I did. The more you learn, the more you learn you don't know. The old Dunning-Kruger effect. After drifting this guy and breaking it several times, I actually ended up apprenticing at a Japanese garage doing Daigo Saito's car back when he was getting famous, the uh, famous Mark II Ebisu jump, the very first one. That was a FNATS, F-N-A-T-Z. Apprenticed there for three years. I was going there every weekend and I was working on all sorts of crazy cars. They actually tuned the car for me and everything as well. Taught me how to assemble, disassemble SRs, pretty much every other engine. We have a lot of younger followers that follow us on all of our socials. If you had some words of advice to them, what would you say? I would say probably if you were that interested, follow the same route that I did. Find someone who you know is good with cars and get them to teach you what they can. Just work for them for free if you can. Your friends are just as lazy as you are, so if you drag them to help them work on their cars, you're gonna learn how to work on their cars too. It's been an honor, sir. Thank you so much. We'll see you at the next drift event, man. Absolutely. All right, thanks, man.